Uh, so today the goal is to discuss some constructions of lifted expander graphs. And I'm going to introduce what, what lifting means in, in this context. So uh, what is this? Uh, what is lifting, which is going to be a, the central operation here. And uh, we are going to introduce this slowly. Uh, okay? And the vague idea is that you start with a graph, a small graph, let's say G here on, on, on any vertices. And, and then you're going to do some lifting operation that, that will take it to, to a much larger graph. I don't know. Some G, G tilde in, where the number of vertices is potentially much larger. It can be or it cannot be. So there's going to be some lifting operation. And uh, one very canonical example, or perhaps one of the, the simplest example of lift, this is going to be a small one. It's going to be what is called a two lift. And the idea in the two lift is that, let's say that we have a graph here. You have a triangle. And in the lifted construction, the two lift, what you're going to do for each edge, you are going to assign a plus minus one to each edge. So let's say that here you have a plus one, here you have a minus one, and then here you have potentially also plus one. And in the lifted construction for each vertex that we had originally, we are going to duplicate it, 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 this vertex. So it's as if you are going to form two copies of this. If this is some u, you are going to have some u comma zero potentially, and another copy u comma one, let's say. And you do this for all the vertices. So here, uh, we're going to have a V one, and then a V on the zero, and then a W copy twice, a W on the one, a W on the zero. So each vertex get, get, gets duplicated in this way. And we, for each edge, we are going to decide uh, how we're going to connect the, the lifted vertices on, on top here. So if you have a plus one, what you're going to do, you're going to put an identity permutation here. We are going to connect the one copy. So we have this UV edge. And then on top, we are going to connect using an identity permutation if you see a plus one. And if you, if you see a plus one again, you're going to connect using an identity. And if you have a minus one, you are going to use a, a, a transposition. You are going to connect the one copy with the zero copy and uh, the zero copy with the one copy. So this is one example of a, a, a two lift, and you are going to define them more generally. But questions about this uh, lift operation so far? Uh, okay. Questions? Oh, okay. And uh, it, it was a very simple operation, and you can ask the question: How is the spectrum of this guy is, is related to, to the, the, the spectrum that we have here? Right. Uh, so you might be interested in understanding the, the spectrum of the lifted graph. So suppose that this is our small g, and, and this is our lifted graph g, g tilde, and uh, what, what would be the, the spectrum here? And in the case of two lifted, it admits a very simple expression. So one piece of thing that that's useful to define is that we, we have the adjacent matrix of, uh, of g. So let, let's say that A is the adjacent matrix. Of G and uh, not normalized. And one thing that you can define is the side adjacent matrix. It's as if for each edge of, of the graph, let, let's say that this is a, a V, we, we can think that we are going to orient the edges. And for, for each edge, we are going to define a signing function. That maps oriented edges in this case, and then here in the simple form to plus minus one. Right? Um, and, and in a way that I don't know, if you have the S, V, it's going to be equal to the inverse. I don't know, V U inverse. So that it's consistent. Right? And in the case of plus minus one, it, it's going to be the same, but we are going to generalize this to. to, 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 to uh, larger groups and larger actions. And we, we have this notion of sign that uh, it, it was this assignment here to the edges. And we can form what, what, what's called the sign adjacent matrix of the graph. So here, with respect to this sign, 
here you, you do mean minus one. I mean, if one is one, it's minus one. In, in this case, minus one becomes minus one. Oh, yes. So it's not, it's not, it's not additive inverses. Because it's multiplicative inverse, yes. It's for a group, but yes. Yes, yes. Uh, you are simplifying a little bit the definition here, but we went, yeah. But yeah, let, 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 let me stick with this one, and then you're going to, to be more general in, in a minute. But one piece of notation that we can define that's very useful it is the signed adjacent matrix, right? Uh, signed adjacent matrix. And in the signed adjacent matrix, if you look at an entry corresponding to UV, we should see uh, that it, it's going to be supported on edges. So UV needs to be a directed edge. But you're going to multiply this with the sign, right? Uh, sign in this case of uh, UV. So we, it, it gets plus minus ones according to the sign that we have, right? Uh, all right. So it, it's only for, for the edge. So here, if, if it's an edge, and, and zero otherwise. And now the question is, you would like to understand the spectrum of, of this guy. So we have some adjacent matrix of this guy, not normalized. And what would be the spectrum of, of this guy? It's simple to see. Uh, is it clear that the setting of the plus minus ones? Uh, okay. So they uh, for only for people who don't know where. Yes, uh, for only yes. If you know, it's very easy. Right? Uh, yeah. And uh, any ideas how uh, I'd like to relate this? So let's explore. So one way of writing this adjacent matrix of, of this the, the lifted graph would be in blocks, right? Uh, we can write a um, block form here. So here, what we're going to have, we're going to have A plus AS. Here, we're going to have A minus AS. Here, we're going to have A minus AS. And then here, we're going to have A plus AS again. So if you're looking, so this is the second component being zero. Then the second component being one, the second component being one. And then here we need to normalize by half. Right? Um, so th this will get the, the identities and, and this will get the transpositions. Right? Uh, and once you have in this form, so if you have an eigenvector, AF is equal to lambda F here, right? Uh, the, the claim is that uh, if you take this guy, F, F, two copies of this, th this is also going to be. An eigenvector if I don't hide lambda. Right. So if, if apply f here, the copies of as they're going to cancel, and, and then you're going to get uh, two, 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 two times a times f, one of the f's, right? Two, and you get precisely this. Okay. So you're saying that uh, every eigenvalue of our original graph is going to appear right in the lift in the lifting, and, and similarly, if you take a guy. In the sign matrix, I don't know, some f, let's call it g, some g equals to mu times g, an, an eigenvector of the sign matrix. And you do the same thing, but, but, but now we need to flip the signs. So here, g, g, we are going to get mu. Uh, so this has a minus g times g times. All right, so we, we, we have this nice form, right? Uh, Okay. And so the, the little lemma for, for two lifts is, is quite simple, right? Uh, is that the, the spectrum of this is going to be the, the, the union, right, of the spectrum of, of G and, and the signed, uh, let me call it potentially, the spectrum of AG, AG tilde, is going to be the disjoint union of, of both spectrums, right? Uh, Okay. Uh, uh, sign. So we, we have this, 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 this little lemma. Uh, questions about this? This was an example for two lift. And we are going to, to go towards a, a general definition. Uh, no questions so far. Okay. 
general, what you can think is that, uh, I don't know, here we might have a lift size parameter, so some L belonging to N, we think that's going to be a lift size. And here you're going to start with our small graph, uh, V. And then when you apply the lifting operation, you also need to specify, we did this, did this example is sort of the F2 case, right? Uh, Z2, but you can think that we have more general uh, group back. Then. So we may have some subgroup of, of the symmetric group. And uh, you're going to define some, some lift operation that's indexed by a group and, and also the lift size. This is going to be a new lift. And uh, this is going to be a, a tilde here. And the, the goal is that for, for each edge that we have, I don't know, if you have a UV, here, so suppose that this is an edge belonging to, to the base graph. What you're going to do, you're going to create several copies now. So here you're going to have, I don't know, some uh, U1, U2, all the way to some UL. In the side. And then here you're going to create several copies again. So V1, uh, V2 all the way to some uh, VL. And here, uh, we, we are also going to have a notion of assigning, right? Uh, so we are going to have that for each edge, for each directed edge, what we're going to associate here is going to be an element of the group, right? Uh, so it's going to sign with, with an element of the group. So th th this is a generalized sign. And uh, we are going to, to have the inverse as before. So UV, is equal to S V inverse to be consistent. All right. And uh, now we, we, we associated with this edge, we are going to have a permutation. Right. Uh, that, that, that there is going to be, let's say that this is an edge E. There is a permutation pi E that, that's associated with this, given by the sign. And then you simply connect using the definition of the permutation that we have at hand. Some, some permutation here. So th th this is a general definition of, of a lift. And uh, uh, it, it's going to give us a graph, right? Uh, so the, the, the lifted graph in this case, so g, g, g tilde, wh what happens to the number of vertices? So now we are going to have, if you had little n vertices here, okay, there's an n vertex graph. Here, the, the, the number of vertices, well, let's say that it's an n vertex graph. The, 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 the number of vertices grows, right? Uh, becomes little n times the lift size, which is good, right? You're creating a larger expander. And, and here we have the degree. Well, what happens with the degree? So the, the degree of, of the small graph, the, the, of the new graph, remains exactly like the degree of the larger graph. So the degree is preserved. Uh, this is very nice, this is very nice. But the, the, the question that we want to ask is, is the spectrum, right? Uh, I, I, ideally, if you, if you started with some G that was an expander, would like to preserve expansion, right? Uh, so ideally, so we want somehow to preserve, but you need to work for this. And uh, one, one thing that we see is that uh, expansion is not always preserved, right? Uh, if you take the identity permutation in the two lift case, if you take all plus ones, you're going to have two copies of, of the same graph, right? Uh, so it can be completely disconnected. So one thing that we're going to look for in this lifting is to preserve, how to preserve this, uh, this here. And, and this, uh, this lifting operation has a bunch of names, right? Uh, it, it, the, the lifted graph is also called a culver. It's also called a, an L culver. And this lifted graph can also be seen as a, an instance of a labeled extended uh, graph. So this is also labeled. Uh, extended graph for unique games. In, in the context of the, the unique games conjecture. But it has different names, this kind of lifting operation in, in, in different communities. And uh, I will adopt this, this lifting part here. Very good. And uh, 
Now let's try to understand the spectrum of more general lifts and see what, what, what happens. So maybe before we continue, I thought you okay. say, uh, this whole this idea way. of uh, Using lifting in order to build expander graphs is uh, an idea of a build and linear, with a really amazing paper. That also, you will probably talk about some of the results. Yeah, I will borrow some of the, the results. Yeah, so uh, started with this. Uh, Really and, 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 and I think he knew about this 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 covering uh, from yeah. topology, and he took advantage of this. And the, the lifting gives a very clean way of, of generating larger and larger expanders in a certain sense. And uh, yeah, yeah. Wait. Yeah, yeah. Recently, they had seen events like, uh, inside every cloud, right? We're taking every vertex and turning into an L cloud. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And we're not putting edges. Inside. Yeah, we're not putting any edges inside. Yes. I know that it will increase the degree, but uh -huh. you can do it mildly. Is there an enhanced reason? I, 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 I have never seen this being done. It's a good question. I don't know. If you want to get better expansion somehow, we put putting edges inside the cloud. Right? But it's pretty amazing that you don't need. Okay. <laughs> I mean, those are very small clouds, and the graph is far. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Wait, I'm, going to take no, no. I'm going to take all the explanation ah. to the end. Ah, okay. and it, it, it depends a lot on the group. So it, 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 if the group is not a billion, you can lift arbitrarily high. Ah, wow. And if the group is a billion, you can lift all the way to exponential. If you, but yeah, the, 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 to, to lift this is the baby version. Right. Right. It's not the end of, of one. Sorry. Oh, no, no. Sure, sure. So, yeah, so you can get into infinity. No, no. Of course. Why, why but if, you if, if at every step, L is all of one. No. Forget it. Okay. Forget <laughs> <laughs> okay. it. was that. Uh, so now we can ask ourselves the, the, the same question again. Uh, what is the spectrum of the lifted graph? And, and now you're thinking about an HL lift. Any ideas how the, the spectrum of this is going go? One thing that you could do, you can write in, in a cleaner way, right? You, you can assume that the, the words of the base graph, I don't know. G. Which would be a different block form is V1 uh, all the way to some VN, the, the, the small graph. It has th th those vertices here. Right? Uh, and we have another way of organizing the, the, this thing. And let's organize, I don't know, here. L let me write in blocks. And uh, for, for, for simplicity, let, let us still consider blocks of, of size two uh, and generalize. So we have V1 and uh, I'm going to abuse a little bit from the indexation from 0 to L minus 1, from 1 to L minus 1. Okay. So we have V1, V1, 1. So we are going to have a, a, a block of this form. So instead of grouping the, 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 the zeros and ones like we did in the other one, I'm, I'm going to, to make, form small blocks like this. So the 2, 0, 2, 1, etc. Zero, uh, PN1. So, uh, zero, one, and do, do, do you see some structure already in this form? Uh, VN zero, PN one. So here it's as if you're going to have a matrix that has blocks. So this would be one little block, this would be another little block. Little block and then so on, right? Uh, it will be it will become in this block form, right? Uh, and if you do not have an edge, if suppose that we do not have an edge between uh, I don't know v1 and v2, the, the block is going to be zero, flat out zero, right? Uh, and uh, if you have a plus one, we are going to have the identity matrix here. If the I don't know, so it needs something of the item. So if, if you have a, an edge here, that's the identity, that is a plus one, you're going to have something of this form, identity. Right? Uh, okay. So, uh, and uh, let me not, to not uh, let me put a zero here to use this, this space. Suppose that, that I had a minus one here. So we are, what I'm going to have here is going to be this uh, matrix here and this. So here we have this, here. So we have this, this little blocks like this. 
And one thing that you can try to do is that depending on the group is diagonalize or come up with a block structure, right? Uh, so the, the underlying group that you had for plus minus ones was just Z, Z2, right? Uh, so that, that, that was the underlying group that had taken place here, right? Uh, and uh, it, what you can do, you can write this matrix instead of the usual basis, you can write in the Fourier basis, right? Uh, and the, if, if you write the matrix in, in, in the Fourier basis, which is, would be one, one, Uh, one minus one. So if you write things in this case on a billion group basis, it's going to diagonalize this matrix and it's going to diagonalize all, all the blocks. And instead of writing this form, you can collect the, 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 the matrices. It's as if you have two reduced representations and you can collect the trivial one and the one. So this would be associated with the trivial character. This will be associated with the non-trivial character. And you can somehow combine the blocks. So this matrix there is, is going to be, we can perform some change of basis. You can apply unitaires such that the matrix above is going to be precisely a block where you have the adjacent matrix of the graph. So big block and another block that you're going to have the matrix of signs. And then here you're going to have zero. So. Because what you can do after diagonalizing, this becomes diagonal, everything, all the blocks becomes diagonal, and then you can collect the, the non-trivial guys together. The non-trivial guys gives us the sign matrix, and you can collect the trivial ones, and the trivial ones, they give precisely uh, the, the adjacent matrix here. So in the, the, the language of your representation says if you, uh, you, you have an action of, of a group, so it's, it's as if you have a representation, right? Uh, and I don't know, you, you can write the matrix that has an entry for each element like this. And then here we are going to have some, some sort of representation going on. I don't know, which may not be reducible. Let me call it down. Some representation that may not be reduced, but you are sort of summing. So if, if, if you do not know this language, you ignore this part. And what, what you can do, well, what you did there, you're sort of block diagonalized this part. In the case of a billion group, it fully diagonalizes. And you got the, the, the two copies of all sign matrices. But in general, you can form block structures. You can take this representation, break into reducibles, and you're going to have some diagonal form on blocks. Okay, but it, it, this is just a side remark. Ignore this if, if you don't know. But uh, it, but we can let, let's focus on a simpler group again instead of Z2. Let's go to some cyclic group. Let's go to ZL. Right there. And in CL, the same idea is going to hold, right? Uh, so it, it's as if each little block here is sort of a directed Cayley graph. And we know that the Fourier characters, they, they diagonalize the, 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 this action of CL. So in general, for CL, it's as if you're going to have W, that, that, that's a primitive root, right? Uh, I don't know, E to the minus two pi i divided by L. And then instead of forming just the signs corresponding to the trivial and, 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 and the non-trivial character, you're going to have a block that has all the, the characters here. So in the case of CL, that's, uh, that, that's one case that you're probably going to focus the most. It, it, it's as if you, you, the matrix that you're going to have is going to be uh, the original adjacent matrix, then uh, an adjacent matrix signed using the, the, the first non trivial character, and then potentially the, the second non trivial character, and then so on, right? Uh, all the way to here. So you're going to have blocks. Uh, well, and a bunch of zeros here. So this is a structure of, of a ZL. Lift when you lift using this group, it, it, it has this block forms, right? Uh, so if you want, why this block form is relevant to us? You you are interested in making this thing expand, right? Uh, you want to lift and, uh, and have an expander uh, at the end. So we inherited the, the, the spectrum of the original graph always. So we need to start from a good place, from a good expander, and and all the other blocks we, we need the eigenvalues should also be bounded, right? Uh, so, so suppose that A was a uh, regular graph. And so, so suppose that, uh, I don't know, let's introduce some notation. So here we, we have the eigenvalues of A. Right? Uh, so suppose that uh, 
we, we have lambda one. Okay, so this is going to be D, and then lambda two. So the, the eigenvalues, right, uh, as usual. I do it to some lambda on the end. Is greater than minus d, and uh, we can consider this point here, right? Uh, we are going to measure the, the spectral expansion of, of the graph, which is going to be the max. So we, here we're going to take uh, lambda two of a, and then lambda. Very good. And uh, we have a regular graph. So, so if this graph is also a good expander, right? Uh, I don't know if lambda, let, let's say that it was even closer than the illusion bound, we are in good shape. But, but somehow we need to prove that the spectrum radius of all the other guys, you want to be very close to about square root of the, if you want to get something closer to Raman Okay, but uh, let, 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 let's find that. Okay, so th this is what happens with abelian groups. With non abelian groups, you're going to have more complicated representations here. Right? Uh, the, the block selection is, is a little bit more complicated. So questions about the lifting and the, the spectrum structure of the lifting? And, uh, yeah, just that when the adjacency matrix is all once as usual, uh -huh. you have to incur D as an eigenvalue. It's, mm -hmm. it's irregular. But when it's signed, there are cancellations, and you can hope that in all the other ones, you will you have much, the spectrum will be much smaller. That's the reason to hope for, uh, you know, that this, this idea will be good at all. In particular, in the monster earlier this year, he explained to us that if the signs are random, uh -huh. it doesn't matter what A is, it's going to have a very good spectrum. No. He essentially explained that to us. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> an example that it fails with high probability, this one, the structure is important. Yeah. There are conjectures that there is always a sign that's very good. That's even more, you can give you some Ramanujan lifts. But, 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 uh, but, if high, but it may be very hard or rare to, to, to find those. So if you take a small graph, suppose that you have, have something and you're thinking about your lifts. You have small clicks like this, several small clicks. Your graph is a disjoint union of a bunch of small clicks. Yeah, I guess yeah. the density needs to be more or less the same. Yes, so it's it's not, yeah. you need some yeah. pseudo randomness, yeah. right? Yeah. If not a high probability yeah, statement. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, the, 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 the observation of people. I mean, yeah. um, I mean, you can can continue this example. Oh, the, 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 in, in this, uh, uh, I, I want to work with something that uh, the base graph is good. I'm going to crucially rely on a better structure of the base graph later. Uh, so that, that, that's, for me, this is a, a evil guy, a bad guy. I mean, the, the techniques that I'm going to present, they did not take care of this. But there are techniques that do take care of this. Okay. So let's say a little bit of what uh, uh, some of the results, right? Uh, of constructing standards is a very, uh, well, I don't know, it has a lot of results, so we're, uh, we're not going to, to be able to survey a, a lot of things here. That, that, that's why that I changed the, the title of the talk to some little construction instead of trying to say it all. And some of the methods that I know, they, they, they are like these methods. For, for, for lifted base construction. So one method is based on discrepancy. It, it avoids this case because it, it, it takes a matrix at the base that has good pseudorandom pseudo -random properties. And that, that, that's important. So the discrepancy for us is going to be the expander mixing lemma, roughly. Use some ideas based because the, the expander mixing lemma is going to tell us that things are reasonably uniform spread in the graph, right? I cannot have those uh, the high concentration. So uh, uh, another way of, of attacking them is using the trace power method, which is a uh, 
uh, and recently the, this became quite useful because uh, analyzing the trace power method with the non backtracking operator becomes very, very convenient. So, uh, so with the non backtracking operator, but we are going to define this. And the third method that, that I know is, and we are not going to say much about them, is interlacing families. Interlacing uh, families of polynomials. Which is a beautiful method. So lifting so powerful that you can even construct Ramanujan graphs out of them using this interlacing technique. And in a certain sense, interlacing techniques, they, even if the event is extremely rare, you're just from existence. So you, you can even, show that this guy would have a nice bipartite lift in some sense. But those are the methods, and we hope to, to say a few things about the, the first two uh, in this talk. And in terms of spectral expansion, we, 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 I don't know. Uh, we, we, of course, we, we have uh, uh, the Alon book on the bound that uh, you all know, right? Uh, and it's for a family of uh, expander graphs. But let me just state in this uh, simplified form. So if, if you have a family of the regular graphs, then this lambda two has to be greater equal than two, the square root of the minus one, minus some little o that depends on the number of vertices of, of the graph, depends on the length. But you, you have this, you cannot, for, for families of, of graphs, you cannot beat this, this bound, right? Uh, which is the, 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 the expansion of the universal over the, the, the infinite tree, right? Uh, and uh, we, we can somehow, uh, say a few things about the methods that, that, that are there, right? Uh, and I don't know how to obtain expanders. If you look at lambda g, uh, we, we have constructions, I don't know, that, that get close to it. So we have two, the square root of log d. I, we, 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 this is one kind of guarantee. Uh, we, we have something that gets polylog, square root of d. Uh, we, we have things that get order of uh, the square root of d. And then we, we have things that get exactly Ramanujan. Uh, we have this, uh, we have this also, this the jungle of uh, things. And, and then you have all the way to the Ramanujan bound. D minus one. This will be the, the best that you could achieve. Ramanujan bound, this will be the perfect one, right? Uh, and we, we have several constructions here. And when I first saw this, I thought, well, why people care so much about those? Uh, this is more variations, right? Uh, and I think that they are quite, quite interesting, right? Uh, for some applications, you may not care, but the techniques involved and so on, how you construct, there is a lot, right? Uh, if you want to get Ramanujans, you might want to, to use things related to number theory, or you might want to apply techniques of two lifts. So just to give some examples, so what is the type of constructions that you can have? Wait, but are, are there applications where something really only works if you have Ramanujan or close to Ramanujan? The only way to get Ramanujan is to interlace polynomials if you are not building a lamp from number. But, but yeah. I'm curious if someone showed that even I think that the LPS from Ramanujan graphs, they, they, they can be seen as having some lift structure inside, muting the, the group structure. Uh, yeah, that's, you're not lifting them. You look at them and see that, that there's some uh, some abelian structure inside. Uh, abelian. Yes, a little bit of abelian structure. But yeah. But I'm I'm asking okay. about applications. Yeah, applications. Is there an example where it's really crucial that your expander is Ramanujan? Uh, we have two of the biggest specialists here. What I understand for, for most applications that I know. Uh, very few that yeah, very, on very the few. nose, if on the nose I can think maybe. I mean, bigger than zero is already good. But like uh, like uh, the uh, Lubetsky Paris. Um, it's not an application, it's, uh, it's an example, this cutoff uh, thing. Cut yeah, it's not an application, it's, uh, it's an example. If you want an application, <laughs> it's potential application. Yeah, I mean, uh, these are the mathematical consequences of having a uh, you know, Ramanujan bound. You get some phenomena happening uh, on the random walk on the ground. Mm -hmm. There's a, a, one of the biggest questions on uh, explicit construction of expanders. Uh, I think <coughs> to me, maybe the, the most challenging one is that of lossless expansion. 
complex theory. You want just vertex expansion as big as possible. You have a deregular graph, so in a random graph, you expect that all sets up to size roughly n over d will extend by a factor of d. Right? To d over 100. Yeah. We don't know how to construct this. We don't know. The best bounds, if you take a Ramanujan graph and you analyze it well, and even this is not trivial, it was done by Kahale. If you do it in, using the expander mixing them, you will see a, a vertex expansion of only d over 4. If you use clever uh, you know, trace and so on, random workshop, uh, which I went here, Kahale showed that you can get expansion d over 2. And the other two is, in fact, a limit. There's a paper showing that uh, one of your students, what's his name, I forgot, that shows that there are one of the graphs where you don't expand by d over two. And you want d, I mean, you want close to, you want 0.90 or even 0.51 d. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a paper we wrote uh, that is, this sort of gets it in a one sided case. Let me not go into this, but it's a weaker version of process expansion is unique neighbor expansion. Something that you get from anything larger than d over 2 expansion is that in the neighborhood of such a set, there is a vertex that's connected only to one. Mm -hmm. right, the right, I mean, just everything. This is very important for the application of using such graphs for, uh, to build codes, like Sipser Spielman calls expanded codes, because uh, when you have only one neighbor, you can decode. I'm not going to explain it. Anyway, getting more than the other two. So that's unique. So unique neighbor expansion is just the, forget about the expansion. You just want a neighbor that's connected only to one element in the set. This was done by uh, Alon and uh, Capalbo using the homogen graph. Very clever construction. It's just on the nose giving you this uh, property. You can call it an application. I mean, I don't know that anybody's using this graph, but for this, no, if you don't, yeah. Okay. yeah. Anyway, sorry, sorry. No, 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 no. Yeah, this sorry. is great, great. Making. And you all saw the vertex expand, the lossless expand. <laughs> uh, uh, one example that, that I know that uses this bound, constant times square root of d, is the construction of explicit option, near option binary codes. When you explicitly construct them of large distance time from construction, you, you need some expansion of yeah, the Yeah, Yeah. Yes. Uh, but but uh, below here, I, I don't know. And, and several applications, a constant spectral gap is already very nice. And, and potentially being able to get arbitrarily, I don't know, some, some epsilon times D. I don't know. That, that you can make epsilon D is going to increase, but you can make epsilon arbitrarily small. Several applications, if you have these, you're very happy already. Uh, and uh, you also need to, 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 to point out a, a theorem of Friedman, right? Uh, that, that if you take a run on the regular graph with high probability, graph, uh, you're going to have a good expansion. So run on the regular graph G. Lambda two is going to be at most and uh, two, two times square root of d minus one plus, plus, plus some epsilon here. So in, in, in a certain sense, we you know that there are a lot of graphs, right? That, that achieved this, this bound here, right? That, that was uh, Friedman's result. And uh, in, in terms of techniques, let, 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 let's see. Uh, uh, let's see who, who, who did them. Uh, so this was Ben Arroy and Tashman around 2008. And it, 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 this is zigzag uh, as wide replacement product like techniques, zig, zig, zigzag based. Uh, here in this bound, we have the, this important work of the blue Nino as well, right? Uh, around 2006. Not as well, it's not, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. it's not, it's not chronological. Yeah, it's sorry, it's, 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 it's sort of like uh, expansion. Yeah. But they are very different techniques, right? Uh, so, and here that it's lifts, they, they analyze two lifts in their paper. And here we, we, we have lifts of the form ZL, uh, ZL con L lifts. Uh, this is, uh, so this is explicit. And uh, this is explicit. This is a random. 
But if this is by uh, Agarwal at all, uh, this is around 2013. Uh, we have this proof of Friedman that, that showed existence that, of course, to be randomized. We have a word and app that, that simplified this proof. In 2015, he simplified this proof, analyzing that there's no backtrack operator that uh, we are going to discuss, but an explicit deronomization of their proof via two lifts. So you also have a deronomization. Now, uh, this is by Mohanty, O'Donnell, and Paredes in 2000. So that they sort of deronomized the Friedman's theory and got this for every degree. And, and, and here it's a beautiful technique, one of them. You can also think that you have two lifts for this. And this is going to be just an existential proof using the interlacing method. And, and, that's, and that gets the, the Ramanujan. And that, that's the MSS, Marcus Spielman, C.C. Uh, around 2013. So it's our uh, yeah. explicit version of uh, this. Like Michael Coyne. Who did explicit version? Michael Coyne, the guy who died. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's it's not the two lifts. It's a version. It's, it's, it's a permutation. Yeah, it's a permutation version. So they construct it. Well, you can think of it similarly. It's not exactly the, the same. It's not lift, but it's a cross to so inspirit for this. Yeah, you, you, you can start, you, you can take, I don't know, we have two bipartitions and you can select uh, some random matches between the two bipartitions. And uh, co 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 it, it, this is another uh, construction of Marcus Gilm Silvassa that was, as I've mentioned, that they're randomized by Michael. Yeah. Uh, All right. Uh, uh, also, work of uh, Puder from Dili. There is another one, and uh, this is going to be for arbitrary large lifts and for, for some groups, uh, some non abelian groups. So you can take random permutations, uh, right? Uh, some non abelian groups. They extend the markets, it must be lost about the yes. Do you have some conditions on groups, but they did. And this is a whole Puder and Sadler in 2018. They also have a construction of a lift for, for non -abelian. And the non is very powerful. You can lift arbitrarily high. Yeah. I, I think a very it's very specialized. Uh, an interesting question would be how to, uh, I don't know, to generalize this to, to the abelian case. Because in, in the abelian case, you cannot lift arbitrarily high. Uh, but, uh, potentially, a few words about that. Oh, which one? Yes. Yes. This version of MSS is not explicit because somehow they, they, they look at the expected characteristic polynomial, which becomes a matching polynomial. And then it, it's not clear that you can normalize. Computing some coefficients of this polynomial can be hard. Uh, so, so he made it like this. I mean, the, in the example, he shows first the two leaves. Yeah. You can take a two leaves and the signing you take is the lambda. The question with what with probability, let's say we start with the Raman uh, or with any the probability that you get an eigenvalue bigger than you had before. Okay, so below linear in this initial work, it just uh, shows that, uh, you know, that uh, you, you there exist, you know, even a lot of signing will give you one. Uh, even this was the you know, local lemma, so uh, it was a rare, a rare event. But you could uh, get it, and when they de randomize it, so you could get it. Uh, the, the Marcus Spielman Srivastava in this technique of interlacing polynomials showed that you can get the Ramanujan bar. But it's again, it, it, if you know the interlacing polynomial method, it, uh, it gives something in Okay, so the advantage of MOP over this is that it's, it's not random. Yeah, on, but uh, as uh, we just said, there's a, another paper of MSS, there are four, four, five papers of MSS. There's one in which they use something different than lifts, but spirit similar to lifts, which has a denominator. So the advantage of MOP is that it's like uh, a No, it's just different. Like I said, lots of different techniques are useful for different things. Okay. Yeah. It's not, uh, yeah, I don't know that it's really important to. So in the one, the lift that can be the semi-lift that can be randomized. There is no interlacing polynomials playing the role. 
there is a uh, some yeah there is some free probability playing a role and some uh, version of it. yeah it's uh, but it's a different analysis so the main advantage of this uh, paper the existential result is to reduce the ego of the algebraists who thought that some algebraic graphs could not be the same algebraic or number theoretic method this is uh, this at least it doesn't exist so the, 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 and you just stress that the, the, this construction can only prove that the existence of bipartite lifts because somehow in the spectrum can only control the upper half part of, of the spectrum so it only gives bipartite and uh, i think a potentially important open question in the field is, is whether you can construct a ramanujan graphs for every degree i think this is still open and i think a bold conjecture of below and linear is, is that if you take any uh, regular graph, even potentially th th those weird ones that would break things with high probability, you'd be able to, to, to do a, a lift, a two lift, that, 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 that would be Ramanujan. That, that's the, the conjecture that they, they, they had. And, and somehow the, the, this result of Marcus spin and Silvassa was giving a positive answer in the case of bipartite of, uh, of, of this conjecture. I, I, my understanding is that it's too open and they it's mentioned. Open, but they proved it uh, for the long. For D yeah. Oh, you, you, you're, you're saying that the square of D log D. Ah, yeah, yes, yes. You get yes. cross for every graph. Yeah, in, 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 in their paper, they managed to get a, a bound of this form. It, it, I, even though the, 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 I'm hiding poly log factor, but the poly log factor is quite uh, nice here. And it's explicit using two lifts. In the original paper, they already got, got nice. Uh, and I think Lino likes to run some, some miracle things like that. And uh, he, he might have seen that even this pool potentially be true. I don't know. By the way, in all of this, you this is only a bound for the biggest eigenvalue, not in absolute value. Well, it, 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 in most cases, it's for both. It, 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 it's only this one that, uh, that, that the interlacing family can only counter one of the sides of this. Yes. Yeah, so all right. And, and uh, it, the, the group structure pl plays an important role. And th th there is a lemma that uh, the, the guys that were studying did this abelian lifts, the cyclic lifts, that they, they observed. I, I got I got Which I got one of this. I, I, I'm not entirely sure. I think it might have been a student of Kola. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, Alexandra Kola. But, but I'm not entirely sure. So I don't think it's Manindra Agarwal. No, no, it's, it's Agarwal. Do you know who else it's uh, it, It's Kola Agarwal. Uh, the, 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 the names are too complicated for me. Okay, I think too, 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 too. But yeah, yeah I, 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 I think it's called a, 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 a group-based lift or something like this. Right. I can't help them. But they were interested in this, in this abelian case there. And uh, what you observed is that uh, suppose that we start from an any vertex, any vertex based graph G. And, if, and then you're doing a lift of size L using an abelian lift. So you're doing a ZL, ZL, L, L lift. And if you take L to be very large, L to be, I don't know, larger than something that depends on the degree here times N. Then it's not going to be a building, and uh, not going to be expanded. Then uh, resulting graph. It is not expanded. Well, I think with good probability. Ah, with good probability, it's also. Uh, yeah. But it can, yeah, it's not that no uh, I, I, I think it should break break down because. It, it, I, I, the intuition is similar to the non-expansion of uh, of Kelly graphs over abelian groups. So it, it, it's as if you have this tiny thing that has uh, about log engine generators, if you're doing something like this. And it, it's as if you have a product chain, right? You have V and you have something on the abelian group. And you need to mix on both of them, right, uh, very quickly. And then in an abelian group, as you take steps, it, 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 the order doesn't matter. So it's as if that. The number of guys that apply to the second component, the only, the only that matters the, the number of guys potentially. In a non-abelian group, since you do not have computation, you, you would be able to reach the, the entire graph. But the, here, some only the, 
Did this setwise it matters right uh, for what means that seems to say that uh, you yeah, that, that you, you, you will never have uh, so yes, it, yes it gets to a billion to be uh, an expansion. Yes, I, I think it gets to uh, a billion. Yeah, okay, so now it's not yes, yes, yes. yeah, so not but why a billion lifts? Why people care about a billion lifts, right? You <laughs> have all those things, right? Uh, for, for, from this result, uh, this is also by uh, From this result, you could get some arbitrarily high lifts or, or using non billion groups. And the, the point is that for, for, for some coding theory applications, you might want to have a good structure on, on the matrix. So here you have this large billion group. So those blocks here, they can be quite large, right? You, you can have, not, not in this representation, but in the block representation there. So if L is very, very large, you get some blocks that are very, very large, right? And you'll be able to build codes out of this. And those are called quasi-cyclic codes. They are almost cyclic, but not quite, right? LBPC codes. I don't know a lot about them, but it seems that the 5G communication uses some quasi-cyclic LBPC codes. And uh, some quantum, some construction of quantum codes, they also use they, 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 they also use this, but, but, but now there are better constructions of quantum codes. Now, now we have good quantum codes, but let's not go there. Uh, so that it's important for applications, they, they, having this abelian structure. And uh, very good. No. But you also get the abelian structure by iterating through this. But, it, it, but it, it's not a large cyclic structure. It, ah, it's going to be. It's going to be a billion, but yes, yes, yes. You need to do. Yeah. So, all right. So let's. Uh, questions so far about this whole business? So one theorem that I would like to discuss today is this one. It's a joint work with um, Mittal, um, Paredes, and Kusiel. It's, it's a little bit early in the, the, the statement of this. And let me write it in simplified form. So for, for, for every degree D, greater equal than three, and that every FRF, so greater than, uh, that there are ex explicit constructions oh, let me write explicit constructions. And uh, it's explicit for, for computer scientists. It's polynomial time in the size of the final graph. <laughs> so it's a very bad explicit. That's not, yeah, it's not good for some computer scientists. It's not good for, for some. Uh, it was curious yeah. because someone in, in an applied field contacted me. Oh, let, let's do these graphs, and it, it's going to be nice to run and the code and see how it performs. And uh, so somehow I had to tell him that uh, it's better to take a random one. That, that's a theoretical result in the sense that the, the, the running time is too bad. Uh, it's too better to. So it's sometimes called weakly expanded, uh, weakly explicit. Yeah, but that's it's a polynomial size, polynomial time in the size of the graph. Yeah, that, 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 that's a, yeah. And in this particular run, it's a very bad polynomial. So it's, it's something that. Uh, very weak. <laughs> it's very weak, yes. Uh, explicit construction of. Uh, of a ZL, ZL leaf, leaf the, the expander, to the from, from a base graph from a suitable. We have seen that uh, the base graph might be important, right? Uh, base graph G. So in, in, in the vertex graph. And, and here, unfortunately, you're going to have some regime of, of parameters. We have three regime of parameters, unfortunately. So if you can unify them, it will be uh, great. 
let, let me write the first one. So if, if the lift size is large, but, but, but not too large, it's true to some delta um, uh, here. And delta, unfortunately, is going to be a function that vanishes as the degree gets larger and as epsilon gets smaller. Then you can get the expansion to be the Lacan Friedman's. So that, 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 that's the first regime. So you, you, you go, oh, so it's not here. The delta, the delta is, is the exponent. So it's even worse. It's here. The delta is true to the n, and that, there is a delta one. And so it, it's much larger than n3 and pi, but it's not all the way true to the n, right? Uh, that will be blank. So the, the, the second regime is if you want to get something universal, you may lose the. the in the expansion. So now you have a delta naught. That's some universal constant. It's more than one. Then you, you, you get some expansion here that, that deteriorates. Here it, it might become just an epsilon uh, times d. But, but d here needs to be sufficiently large. D large. We're able to some function of it. Yes, because it's uh, epsilon alpha. It's, it's just a small function. Oh, did, 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 did this epsilon? Yeah. No, you, you can choose this epsilon. No, I know, I know. But oh. the other, it, it plays a different role. It plays. Yeah. This is additively. So you get uh, epsilon prime. Yeah. So prime. And, 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 and then somehow you can randomize in the, the exact exponential re regime. <laughs> Well, when L is, is about this much, you can also let the randomize. But I'm not going to, 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 to write in, in the, the, the finest form. Maybe we can get a lambda to show the, that's at most some polylog. We, we have those, the, the randomizations so far. So it's going to have this abelian structure, this large abelian structure, which may be useful for coding here. And then you have this. It will be nice to unify, right? That you go all the way. And the, the first two techniques are going to be based on the trace power method. And the second, the third one is going to be based on discrepancy. So you're going to borrow from the Lulino here, and you are going to borrow, borrow somehow from Bordenav and uh, Mohanty, Yodono, and Paradis. So all right. If instead of doing the second one, you just want to iterate the first one several times, where would it fail to like? If you iterate the one, get cyclic. Yeah, that, that, that. Mm -hmm. you ah, you cyclic. want it to be cyclic. It just wants for the cyclic rule. So it, OK, it, so, so that's important to you. Yes, okay. yes, yes. So okay. it, 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 you can look at expanders very simplistic as, as only the, 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 the diagonal value bound, right? Uh, but, but, but for some applications, you may care about this structure. What is the automorphism of okay. and so on? But you so, can, if you don't care about it, you can just iterate. Yes. And in, in, in fact, this result does that. It's, uh, it, it constructs a, by, by creating two lifts, in a certain sense. But they, it also, instead of doing a single short lift, you need to start from something and keep doing a bunch of two lifts. But there are technical conditions that you need to satisfy to, to be able to iterate this. So if you can do a, a single shot, it simplifies a little bit conceptually. But, uh, yeah, but you are really interested in that building structure inside this. this uh, the, the, cyclic, the large cyclic structure. You get the if uh, you do just, just a building, you get for, for iterating. Let's start with a discrepancy technique. And, uh, once you just give some sketches, as you might expect, it's very familiar heavy, right? Right. Let's see it's frequency like method. This dates back to, to the linear. 
And they have a very interesting lemma there. Uh, so you, you want to take a break or will you, what's your plan? Oh, you can take a break now. If you like. but, is that a good time? It, it would be a good time because you can start. Uh, take a five minutes. Yes, yeah. so sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> But it was like okay. It wasn't. Uh, well, like, I, I, there were like <laughs> words. Yeah, like well, yeah. Words. not even the okay. Uh, that, uh, welcome back. Thank you. Um, so I, I would like to discuss a little bit about the discrepancy method. I'm going to only sketch to, to, to give some idea of what's going on. And there you're going to crucially rely for, for this part on it's going to be a, a simple application of so, sort of below and linear. And the, the key lemma that you're going to need from, from the Lulinia is a, it, it's a lemma that's very curious. So it, 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 it's to try to understand the, 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 the norm of, of the matrix. So here's the lemma. Just to make sure that we, we, we are aligned with this thread. So the, the, the strategy, uh, at least for us, is we, we, we start from a base graph that's a good expander, right? Uh, and then uh, we are going to do some, some lead. And then you would like the, all the blocks, let, let's think about two, the, 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 the matrix and potentially the, the sign to be, to, 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 to be good expanders, right? Uh, so you, you are asking that the, the largest uh, uh, eigenvalue and absolute value of this part is about square root of D. Right, uh, but if you have this for all the blocks, the resulting thing would be a good expand. It would be order of square root of D. So th th this is the kind of thing that we are going to shoot for. So in, in, in those things, what, what you can do, you can take, uh, you can think that you're taking some sort of sign at random, right? Uh, and then you analyze the, the spectral ranges of, of those matrices arising here and show that it's small, right? Uh, so th this is the strategy typically on those, uh, on those, uh, except for for the interlacing one. All right. And uh, to, to, to try to understand the, 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 this, uh, this spectral ages of, of, of the matrices, we, we, we can bring a lemma of blue and linear. And here, let's suppose that we have a matrix, I don't know, have a, a matrix B that's uh, it's in RN times RN. Let's suppose that it's a symmetric matrix. Symmetric matrix. Uh, we assume that the del one norm of the rows, uh, one norm of rows uh, is, is bounded by D. And we, we assume that the diagonal entries have, so the, and, and then the diagonal entries and let me simplify a bit. It works with more and more general diagonal entries. It's bounded by one. So, so, so suppose that we, we have a matrix of, of this form. And, and, and they are going to give a, a condition for us to, to, to try to understand the spectral radius of, of, of D. And the idea is that uh, if you can check this condition, you're, you're going to prove some bound on the spectral radius of this guy. So it's a matrix that's symmetric. The whole norm of each row is bound by D. But that's clearly that if you have a sign of a, uh, of the regular graph, this is going to be true, right? Uh, the diagonal entries, they are zero, right? In this case, so it's good. And the, the technical condition to verify is this. If instead of checking for every pair of vectors, you, you, you check for any vector associated with sets, for every two sets, uh, S and T, uh, that, that are disjoint, S intersection, T is, is empty. Uh, we have this uh, this guarantee that when you look at the indicator of S, exactly. what? the intersection is empty. No? The, the, the intersection oh, is, is empty. The intersection is empty. If you have this for, I don't know. So this is the indicator of the set. This is the indicator of set T. And then you, you divide them by their two norm. Indicator of S, two norm. The indicator of um, T to one. If, if you have this for, for every choice, if for every choice this is bound by some alpha, if there is there, there is this alpha, then you can conclude that the spectral radius of, of this matrix B, so whole of B, is going to be bounded by 
some order here of uh, alpha log uh, d over alpha plus one. Well, it, it, in a certain sense, it's giving us an easy way of, of giving some, some bound for the spectral ranges. Instead of checking all the factors, let, let's just check those structured vectors at the expense of playing, playing some log factor. Right? Maybe it's, it's worth stressing that the spectral row of B is exactly this expression when you replace the yes. unit of vector by any unit known vector. Mm -hmm. right, so mm -hmm. it's just, uh, and yeah. they call it. Uh, if expander mixing lemma is abbreviated EML, they call it uh, LME or whatever, the reverse lemma mixing expander. <laughs> because you can deduce a converse. Yeah, yeah. 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 so you, it says that the expander mixing lemma is in some sense uh, optimal. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. so, yeah. <laughs> Very good. And let's look at the, the, the expander mixing lemma, right? Uh, and we, we have this matrix now, now that has some good structure. And you, you want to perform some list of it. That's not uh, to let, let me just uh, say that this is going to be a sketch. And that here you're going to start with G, it's going to be an any vertex, vertex graph. And uh, I'm going to simplify quite, quite a bit, right? Uh, let's suppose that lambda G, so it's the, the regular. Let's suppose that the, this bound is, I don't know, six times the square root of t. Not from illusion, but, but something close from illusion, just for uh, simplicity. And uh, we are going to lift. We are going to somehow lift this guy. And let's analyze this. Uh, the, the, the intuition is going to carry, but for, for simplicity, let's sort of think that we are doing to lift, just for notation simplicity, because of, of that nice structure. And then that, that is sort of generalized nicely. And uh, we are trying to understand now the spectrum radius of, of some sign of this. And for, for simplicity, let's just think that plus minus one, but with characters, things are going to behave somewhat similar. And you'd like to understand this, right? Uh, so in particular, you can try to use this, this way of bounding things, right? Uh, and, but but uh, the, the underlying graph here is, is a pseudo random graph, right? Uh, and you can use properties because Otherwise, you can be dead in those collection of clicks and so on. So we, we need to, to make sure that things are not too concentrated here. And the, let, let, let's see. Uh, one important thing that we're going to use is the expander mixing lemma. It's this, uh, very useful and, and very simple fact. That um, if, if you look at the discrepancy, right? That, that, that's why this is sort of a discrepancy method of um, the number of edges between S and T minus what you'd expect if, if things were roughly uniform. Then you'd get that this is at most the lambda of the graph is square root of S is square root of T. Right? Uh, so that, that's the zero. Uh, it's, it's sort of a discrepancy, right? But by, by how much the counting of edges. Disagrees with so, sort of the, the, the pseudo random count that you have in the graph. And it would help if there would be instead of the L1 norm of uh, L1s, I mean, L1s one norm of the yes. right as well as of the size of S and the Very good. Of the size of the so that, that, that would be the, the, the norms. That's right. Better rotation, better. So square root of S, square root of T. Which would be in this case. So you, what you're trying to do, well, you can take the sign adjacency matrix and, and, and oh, this is a little s, not to conflict with the choice of set s. Uh, yeah, and you would like to understand this, how this behaves, right? Uh, and uh, you, you can take two sets, right? Uh, and, and then try to understand, right? Uh, so you have uh, two sets s. s and P, Sets, sets of uh, then, which is the, the vertex set here. And then you, you'd like to analyze this one as transpose, the, the, let's say the sign matrix, one, one D. Right? Uh, and we need to, to give a nice bound of that form. And then we, we have two cases, right? Uh, depending on the, the expander mixing lemma. 
you can check whether their return is the larger part or whether the counting is the correct part. Because at some point, the sets could be so small, the, the product of them, that the, their return is going to dominate in the expanded mix level. The other one, the random part will dominate. So we are going to have two cases according to whether their return dominates or if, if the counting of edges dominates. So in, in case one, what are going to require, you are going to see, we are going to ask S, C, be greater or equal than, I don't know, 10 times N, you divide by some square root of T. So that, that, that's going to be the first case. Uh, this is smaller. So you want, you want in, in this case, the return is going to, uh, in case you are larger than this. Oh, okay. Yeah, I want this smaller, smaller than this. First case, my second case, I want uh, S, the greater than times A, square root of A. Okay, so you are going to divide in these two cases. And in this case, for our choice of lambda, which is in our case, lambda is about square root of t. Uh, the first case, the error term is going to dominate, and the second term, uh, the other uh, error is going to dominate. So let's see what happens in the first case. Uh, very good. Uh, we, we have this, and this is uh, counting, I don't. If, if you just do the counting, uh, we, we, we can just count in the number of edges in this case, and it, it's going to be like this e to the st in particular, it's going to be at most, I don't know, d over n times s st plus lambda square root of s square root of t. So that, that, that's an upper bound that we can deduce here. But in the first case, it is at least as large as this quantity here, right? Uh, and the, if you plug this value here for, for the first case, what, what can you deduce? And you plug also the lambda, the lambda is less than so six square root of the order. Yes, yes, lambda is going to be, so this is bounded by six square root of t. Um, and, and, and then here you're going to replace. So the, the, the n is at least this much. So if you replace by something smaller, you're going to have an inequality. And the inequality here might uh, read, the, if I get it correctly, is square root of d, square root of s. Let, let us combine the two. And six times square root of d, square root of s, square root of d. So in the first case, we would have this, right? Because I'm replacing this A by the bound that you get from here. And, uh, right, uh, and, and then you get this expression, which is a show constant times square root of D, right? Uh, so in a sense, if the two sets, the product of them is small, then expander mixing lemma will tell us that, that there, are, there are too many things going on. And here you can apply triangle inequality. This is signed, but if you apply it, if you take the absolute value of the entries that you see here, you get that bound. Right, so in case one, you, you get that bound there. It's good to write by EST that it's really one S times A times one T. Uh, EST is just the same by linear form, but with A. Ah, okay, so yes. Yeah, in, in, in the case that the, yeah. the, 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 the art is joint, yes. So here in, in the A matrix. Yeah. And this, uh, just replacing, yes, uh, yes. making all signs one. And it's one <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, uh, Question about this one? No. So, and, and, and then you get something nice, you get something like square root of s, square root of t. And in, in the other case, if, if, if you check if, under this condition here, the set is going to be quite large. And then this part starts dominating, right? Uh, and the, if this part starts to dominate, what you're going to get more if, if you do the computations that the, the size of t. Uh, EST is, is, is about, I don't know, is, is about this quantity here, uh, up to some constants. There is going to be some fluctuation here, so up to some constants. You get S, you get T. So in this regime, this part dominates and they are, doesn't bother you much. So uh, up to some multiplicative constants, you have this count, you have the correct count that you would expect. But it, it, when you're considering this, it's as if you're, you're going to have about that many 
random plus minus one variables, right? Uh, so <laughs> recall that you're going to do the sign at random, right? Uh, and the number of, of variables that you see is about that much, right? Uh, and uh, it, those are random plus minus one variables. And then you can apply concentration to, to see what, what's happening, right? Uh, so this is the, the number of, of such plus minus one factors. And what is the standard deviation that we, we have there? So our, our standard deviation is about square root of that, right? Uh, so it's about uh, the square root of uh, D divided by square root of N, the square root of S uh, times D, right? Uh, so you, and we, we can ask ourselves, uh, if you deviate of the, the, the standard deviation by some amount, right? Uh, if you deviate, de deviate from this point here by a constant, a large constant times the square root of a. If you deviate by this amount, notice that the number of, of this square root of a cancels with this square root of a, and then you get a very nice thing that's square root of d times a constant, right? Uh, and, and we, we, we deviate from this deviation by this multiplicative factor exponentially, quadratically in, in this, right? Uh, so the, 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 this uh, we only fail with uh, with probability minus c squared times n, right? So the, the, this will be the, 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 the failing probability. So we, we fail with this probability here, right? Uh, and uh, we, if you do not fail, we, we get a constant times square root of d. We get the c times square root of d, right? And, and uh, why do you care about having this very small failing probability? Because we need to run this argument potentially over all choices of sets, right? Uh, S and T. And we, we have two to the two in set sets, right? Uh, so if c, so this is, uh, we, we have two, in the worst case, we have two to the n choices of sets. The worst case choices for this. Then we, we can run a nice human bound. Cluster is going to street to the end. Yeah, it doesn't matter. This is even worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we are trying to get, uh, yeah. But okay, up to now we get this alpha, that's about some constant times the square root of t. But, but then when you plug in this lemma, you lose uh, a, a log d factor and becomes square root of the po po polylog, right, uh, in this regime. And uh, this analysis, we, we have thought a little bit about the, the, the plus minus one case, but it generalizes, right? If you have characters, you can run a similar analysis and then do this. W what is the issue of, of, of this kind of approach, right? Uh, th th this is an exponential concentration, right? Uh, it, the, the number of random variables that we have it can be very large, right? How can you de-randomize this? We are trying to use guarantees of Chernoff type bound, right? Uh, so we have a graph that uh, has about, I don't know, D times N divided by two edges. And uh, for each edge, we need the plus minus one variable. We need a lot of randomness in this method, right? Uh, so it's not easily de-randomized, de randomized uh, de this one. But if you go to extremely large lifts, you can randomize this using expanded walks. If you go to exponential size lifts, but let's not uh, uh, say more about this. But with this kind of idea, you can get to the, the, the third guarantee in a certain sense. It, it's a corner case that uh, things are so discrepant that uh, you can randomize. But in general, this method is very bad. You cannot even randomize to this. But they do the randomize it in the paper. We're using uh, k wave independent. It, 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 you, you can, but uh, in, in this naive analysis that yeah. we are going to, yeah. to turn off, yes, yeah. we should be careful. But yeah, below and linear do the randomize, MOP do the randomize. That, that it's not that it's not, not randomizable uh, yeah. at all. But if, if you appeal to this very strong concentration, it should be, uh, it's not, it does not de randomize easily. Uh, Questions about this? Have you seen how the, the pseudo random structure of the graph was crucial, right? Uh, to, 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 to say that to, to give a good bound on, on the spectral radius of the sign matrix, right? Uh, or otherwise, you could have a, a lot of things concentrated and things could fail with high probability. And this exponential concentration, if you overpower this much, you should, you're still going to have an exponential concentration. And you can importantly union bound over the, the choice of. Uh, 
all the characters, right? Uh, so you can do, do some exponential lift size using this, this kind of argument, right? Uh, all right. Um, Questions so far? That's uh, the, the, one of the cleanest approaches, right? Uh, very simple using the this of the random properties of the graph. And now let's go, go to the guarantees one and two. And in guarantees one and two, you are going to use the trace power method. Careful of time. Or those two guarantees that I just raised, you're, you're going to choose the trace power method. And, and, and importantly, with the non backtrack operator, right? Uh, which is going to make the counting much nicer. And uh, okay, very good. And what is the idea here? You want to understand the spectral radius of, of some matrix, right? Uh, here, I don't know, you have a matrix name that uh, you would like to understand its spectral radius, right? Uh, what to do is if it's over the reals, you take very large powers of these, right? Uh, you take a, a power all the way to, I don't know, some, some very large power. And, and, and uh, this is going to be bounded by the trace, right? Uh, Here we can put the distribution the outside. The trace is going to overcount this a, a little bit. Right then. And then, and then what, what to do about the trace, right? Of, of this. This is very, very standard thing in combinatorics, right? The, 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 the trace power method. Maybe there's something to say about this. You hope that if there is a big gap between the first target by whatever determines the norm and the others, then the contribution to a high power will come only from the higher one, and then we yes. don't lose much if you can analyze this. It, it, it's, it's trying to get an infinity norm of, of the absolute values of diagonal values, right? Uh, the, the, the largest one will become more and more dominant here. But in, in a graph that you have any vertices, you may also lose, right? You might be summing any, any, any times, right? If it's an any by n matrix, you might be overshooting a bit. So it's, it's overcounting a bit. And, and typically, in the usual case of, of trace power method for graphs, you may, for sparse graphs, you may need to take about log and the, the length of the walks should you get something meaningful here because you may lose a factor of n very easily. All right. But uh, counting things is, is, is very hard in a general graph, right? Uh, and uh, if you have um, the canonical example would be a tree. If you have a, you know, for, for, if you have a regular tree, an infinite deregular tree, and you're trying to count. Uh, because these amounts, if you think that M comes from a graph, it counts it amounts to count the number of closed walks that, that, that you have, right? Uh, so the, for, starting from any vertex, then the number of closed walks, overall choice of, of length, okay. Of length, uh, yes, of length, okay. But if you have a, 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 a tree like this, and the, yeah, I don't know, we have some vertex that you want to count the number of 2K walks in an infinite tree. It should be the regular, uh, but the thing that is the regular, you are counting the, the the, the, the number of closed walks, if you allow uh, backtracking, it, it's a mess, right? Uh, because we, we can, I don't know, we, leave, we move here and then potentially go back and then we go forth and so on. The number of closed walks, it's it's very messy to, to, to compute in principle. It's not that messy. In a tree, it's, it's nicer. In a, it's nice. It's very simple. In, in a tree, it's much nicer, but it's it, nicer. Yes, uh, it, 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 yeah, this is one of the simplest scenarios, right? Uh, the, the, the base graph that you have may have cycles, and, and, and then things you will get ugly, right? Uh, potentially. But it, the, the point that I'm trying to make if you count non backtracking walks, right? Uh, walks that, uh, I don't know, for the first case steps, you go forward, and then you, you allow yourself to, 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 to reverse uh, at the middle and, and then potentially go back. Then the, the number of non backtracking walks is much, much, much simpler, right? Uh, because the long backtracking walk in the setting, it only avoids the previous guy that you visited. Suppose that you took this edge and now you're here. So now you're going to take another step. You cannot visit the guy that you visited before. You only see the last one. And then potentially you branch forward. So in each of the steps forward, you have D minus one possibilities, right? Each time you only, you're only coming further and further from this guy. 
But if, if you want to, to see a walk that will close to this guy, after you went further all the way down, there is only one path to go back. And counting becomes much, much nicer, you see, in this. Uh, uh, all right, so let, 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 let's give more, more formal, formal definitions. So here you are going to look at the non-backtracking operator. B, uh, we have oriented the edges. It's going to be an operator in uh, E uh, edge cross edge. Um, now it's uh, because we need somehow to remember that the last edge that we have can be of U V U V uh, X Y. How are we going to represent this guy? We are going to first, and we are going to make them, them agree. So you need V and an X to be the same, but it's as if we, I don't know, we had U here, and then suppose that we have just taken that this edge V here, and then we are considering which neighbor to take. So you, it's as if we have ju just taken this edge, and you're considering a, a potential neighbor here. Of the, we cannot take you again because we just came from you. So uh, you, you want the next edge to, to, to start from, from V, so X is equal to V, and uh, you, you want also U, U to be different than Y, to not backtrack. All right, so this is the non-backtrack non operator. And uh, so somehow if, if, if you have, um, Guarantees, spectral guarantees for, for this guy, you can convert it back to spec guarantees of the original graph. Right? Uh, uh, and we are going to only need something very simple out of this, and, but, but we are going to need to work with the signed version of, of, of this operator. So uh, we mentioned that in this abelian setting, we, we had this notion of signs. So we, we had an adjacent matrix that uh, was indexed by some Fourier character like this. It also depends on, on some sign on a group CL, right? Uh, so A, S, and here we have some, some primitive root, I don't know, and um, to, to, to some, some power I. We, we need to understand, we, we would like to, to, to give a, a bound on the spectral radius of this kind of matrix to, to bound one of the blocks that we have over there. And uh, what you're going to do, you're going to look at the designed, the designed version of this. And the, the design of version of this, you're going to sign this edge, let's say. So it's, it's as if we are going to have a, a character uh, let me just call this guy some, some character chi, and then you're going to multiply this by the, uh, it, 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 assuming that we, we have an edge here, the sign of x, y. Uh, if, if, if the edge is present, right, uh, and then zero, this is definitely zero or otherwise. So this becomes the sign version of this non-backtrack operator. And uh, one is the fact that we, we need here. If, if somehow, let's index this by, I don't know, this matrix is going to be B, now indexed by a choice of S and a, a choice of character. But let, let's just call it uh, B for simplicity. So do you mean by if edge? It, 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 it should be well defined. It should be well defined. Well, you can yeah, but, but the you can, you don't have to buy it. Yeah. It's just a condition in the market. It, it, this guy here, right? Yeah, no, but, but the matrix is over edges. Oh, the matrix is over edges. This one is okay. okay. This one is fine. Okay. All right. So one fact that we're going to need is that if the if you look at whole of some non-backtracking um, and you would like to relate this. I don't know. We, we, we prove some bound. We prove that this is, uh, is the square root of d minus one plus some epsilon. This is going to imply that the, the associated matrix sign or, or not, right? Uh, a, a here. So I'm going to think about that. Do, do, do those things are still signed? Let's say signed. My inversion. This is going to be about two the square root of d minus one plus two epsilon. If you give a meaningful uh, spectral guarantee on, on the, the operator, on the spectrum radius of the non, the sign non backtrack operator, you get a nice guarantee for the corresponding matrix. So that, that's all that you're going to need for, for this kind of thing. So, so it's, it's also a yes. Yeah. 
It, 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 it says, uh, I'm dropping from the notation. Yes, it's, it's a signed, it's a signed version. Yes, uh, this is the signed version. And th that's the only fact that we need. And, and the important thing is that the gold standard for us is when you're analyzing the, you're doing the trace power method on the non backtracking operator, you'd like to be as close to this bound as possible. So the, the, the final bound that we obtain from the trace power method, you, you run the, the power and, and then you take a very large route here, right? Uh, and the final thing that we'd like to see is something close to this. If you're close to this, you're going to be very close to near Ramanujan, right? Uh, you're going to be near Ramanujan in the sense. And you need to prove this for every, each of the blocks. Right there. And uh, very good. And if, if you want to do this kind of analysis, one thing that we need to do is uh, first you think about the random case and then later try to randomize. Right there. And uh, what does the random case give us? What questions so far about this, this setting? This idea to analyze the non backtracking matrix, where did it first appear? I don't know exactly where it first appeared, but it was very important what more than apps work. So, you had this freedom paper that's a massive paper, breakthrough break paper, and then the, this mathematician, Borden Ab, he used this in his analysis and become much, much simpler. It, it uh, happened in many, many places, in uh, many areas. Uh, independently, uh, community yeah, detection is really uh, important. But, the, yeah, the, but uh, I've never seen it in proving uh, just spectral gaps for graphs. Uh, spectral radius, yeah. Spectral radius. Spectral radius. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a gap only because you are lifting. Yeah, yeah. Spectral yeah. radius. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, well, I think people in, in the various streets know about it, but yeah, maybe here it's. Uh, but I think time Friedman was a great thing, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it was important there, but but I, it, this non backtracking concept, I, I think it's very old. I don't know, yeah, it yeah, yeah. back to the 60s. The no, 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 may know precisely the answer yes, there, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, let, let, let's continue. So you would like to run the trace power method. And the first thing that you'd like to do is, is to consider a random choice of, of, of sign, right? Uh, you're going to choose that the, the elements are at random, right? Uh, and th there is one very important observation, right? When you're running the trace power method on, on this kind of matrices. So I don't know. We have whole uh, B, that's okay. B, this is going to be bounded by uh, trace power method B, okay. B, here I'm that we, we have a sign. Let, let, let me index again the sign because I would like to take the expectation over the sign. Uh, that this is the conjugate transpose, okay? And you would like to give a, a bound for this. And what is this? And I am going to make some, some simplifications. You're going to be sum, right? Uh, over walks, over edges. So this is u1 all the way to two, I don't know, e to k roughly. I'm going to simplify a few things. And, and then here I'm going to have the product of i push one to two k and the chi, the, the corresponding character that uh, you're considering of the side of, of this edge. Yeah. And uh, if you're doing things at random and typically in the trace power method, you're going to put expectations throughout, right? Uh, over the, the choice of random sign. You, you would like to understand the first moment of this guy, expectation over the, the choice of sign expectation over the choice of sign. And which terms will survive, right? You are choosing assignments to the edges uniformly at uh, random, right? This is a non-trivial character. If an edge happens to appear only once in one such walk, this expectation will vanish, right? Uh, so if there is an edge in our walk, so we have our graph, right? Uh, I don't know, the base graph, things are going to be signed. But it, 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 it's as if we, we are going to start from some vertex and then we would take a non backtracking walk all the way to some point. And then here we have the choice of potentially going back and then we, we potentially go back all the way to here. I'm simplifying a little bit the picture, but let's think that you have this kind of closed walk. And if, if there is an edge in the middle here that, that appears only once, it, it, the, the choice for, for its assignment of element is uniform. So this expectation vanishes. So you, you only care about the walks that you have here when an, an edge appears at least uh, twice. Right? A number of times. Yeah, so that at least twice. Mm -hmm. 
So one, one thing that you can say here is that this whole expectation business becomes accounting business, right? Uh, that you are trying to count the number of uh, of those walks that uh, you're going to call, uh, give a fancy name, k-hike, that you go forward k steps and then go back for, for, for k steps. Number of k-hikes k that are singleton free, that each edge talks that singleton free. That uh, we do not have an edge appearing only once. So this means that every edge in the walk appears at least twice. You mean by k hikes? Yes, k forward, k back. Yes, k forward, k backwards. And I, I'm going to gloss over some, some details here. That, that there are some annoying technicalities, but they are not uh, too, too bad. But uh, we have this, it's this closer, k forwards, k, k backwards, and each edge needs to appear at least twice. So if you're thinking about this exploration, it, it's as if we, we have our graph, we are starting from, I don't know, some potential, some vertex, and some steps you might visit an, an edge that we have never seen before, right? Uh, so that, I don't know, as we traverse this graph, you are seeing edges that we have never seen before. How, how many, new edges we discover in this process at most? Is the, the question clear? So you, it's as if you're, you're taking our hike and then so on, right? Uh, if, uh, in all these steps, it's not possible, but in all these steps we visited an edge that we have never seen before. That, that's definitely going to vanish in this the expectation because each edge appears uniquely, right? Uh, so the number of new edges that we haven't previously visited, right? Uh, we, we cannot have, and we call this a, a fresh step in the notation of, uh, MLP. So each time that you visit an edge that you have never seen, this is a fresh step. How many fresh steps we can have? Sure. K, right? We have a bound on K. So we have at most, that's a very important observation, at most K fresh steps, uh, which is step that, uh, uh, fresh steps is step that you visit a new edge that you have never seen. That we, we have not explored. So out of the two, the total two to the k, two to the k total steps, uh, only k, uh, we are seeing a new edge, only k for fresh. fresh, only k fresh. Uh, this is a crucial observation here. It, uh, the, 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 the crucial observation in this trace power method, if you could do a very crude analysis here, which is not going to work, unfortunately, if, if you're in the context of an infinite tree, you'd have a choice for the starting vertex. And then for each fresh step, you'd be paying D minus one, right? How many fresh steps you have, you have at most K. So you'll be paying a bound like this. And then after you take the, 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 the 2K root of this, you'll be very close to our target goal there of, of having a good operator norm, right? And, but unfortunately, there is extra stuff going on here, right? And uh, one thing, so this is not so, so simple like this, right? But, but this is a good guiding intuition for what we'd like to see, what, what's the kind of asymptotics that we'd like to see. And, we mentioned that if you're just doing the trace power method on the regular graph, about log of the size of the words would be enough to get a good bound, right? Uh, but, but, but here we need to, to do a union bound over all those blocks, right? Uh, and the, the, the number of blocks that we have may be very large, maybe about two to, I don't know, some m to the delta, some function is. So it, it, you, you, because of all, you're, you're applying the first moment method and you want to get a concentration of a more polyp, right? Uh, and it, you need to get a good concentration to make a union bound over all these choices. And instead of the usual log and step blocks, we are going to need to take a walk that's about n to some function here. So some function that depends on the degree and, and, and epsilon. So you are going to visit a lot of the graph to be able to, to make this union bound go through. And uh, it, since you're, you're doing this very large walk, you need to be careful for the count because the, we are visiting a lot of stuff and the, the, the counting needs to be good. And the, any suggestions of how to count this? Uh, 
one way of counting this it would be to give some encoding of hikes, right? Uh, and counting the, the number of possible ways that you can encode such a hike like this. Any, any uh, And one way, uh, so in the case of two lift, you do not have this union bound. So the, 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 this case that we, we take for analyzing two lifts is much smaller. So that, that, that's sort of what uh, we need to do different from, from the movie in a certain sense. And you are going to, to, to try to encode these walks. Let's see how we can encode. We can think that as you are traversing the graph, traversing the graph, that traverse of the graph is going to define an associated height graph. As we walk over the graph, you're, you're sort of seeing some piece of the, the original graph. So the, the idea is that uh, a, a non-flash head, you want to name it, to give it a name, which is just uh, one that we have seen before. So you want to point mm -hmm. to the edge that you mm -hmm. don't want to write the name again. Yes, you, 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 you need to say, oh, If you visited E before, E is the seventh edge mm -hmm. we visited in the past. That's mm -hmm. the must be of B. Yes, the name yes. Of e. yes. yes. Yeah, very good. What we're looking for is some way of compressing the, this representation of, of the walk, right? Uh, and one thing that we're going to bring here that, that, that's going to be important for, for this analysis, let's suppose that the, the base graph for simplicity that we have has a very large girth, right? Uh, so for, you can even work with other technical conditions, but one thing that is going to help us in this counting is that, uh, let's say that the girth of the graph for G is, is uh, I don't know, let, let's call this G, and let, let's say that this is going to be omega of log B minus one of the number of words, a very large curve. Random diagonal graphs that do not satisfy this, they, they, they have some cycles here and there, but the, the argument generalized nicely. And the nice thing is that if you look at a radius R that, that's smaller than the curve, let's say the curve minus one, uh, divide by two, if, if, if you look at a, a radius of this large, you do not see any cycles, right? Uh, so in, in this radius, the, the, the graph is really uh, looks like a tree, right, in, in this case. But even if it's defective, it's okay, it's tree-like. That, that can also be, be helpful. You can also take advantage of this. And that, that, that's one way of bypassing that, that bad example of the disjoint peaks as well. Right? We need to use some structure of the graph, otherwise, if you're going to get a high probability state. All right. And uh, one way of encoding, we can think that first, uh, someone give us, as we explore, that there is going to be a graph associated with this, which is a subgraph. You can call this, that, that there's going to be a height graph, which is going to be a subgraph of the original graph. There is a height graph. And what we can do, we can try to find some encoding for the high graph. So uh, as I've said, we are going to shoot for some sort of encoding that uh, compresses information. And our encoding is going to have two parts. One is to encode the high graph, encode uh, the, the high graph, which is the graph that you see as, as you explore, right? The, the, the graph there. And, and, and then having, after you unpack the high graph, explain how you walk, right, on the high graph. Then uh, expand the walk. Expand the walk, uh, expand the hike, expand the hike, and uh, expand and compress some, some, some encoding for, for the hike itself. So encode the graph and then, and then you encode the, 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 the hike itself. How you traverse, encode how you traverse, you traverse. Uh, the, the, the high graph of the traverse. And now the, the, the local tree like structure is, is going to be very nice. Suppose that we solve this part. And, and, and then we, we have somehow two to the case steps that we need to explain how you're going to traverse this two to the case steps. But you can make, make it into blocks, right? Uh, that if you divide by that radius over there, that's about the girth, right? Uh, we, we, we can, well, let's ignore some, some constants here. 
we can define by the verb, and I'm only tell, if I, I tell you the, fir the first vertex, then there is a good range that things are completely tree-like. And I, I can only, it's enough to tell this other vertex here. And then I, I, again, right, uh, for this radius, I tell this other one. So th this would be uniquely, uniquely specified, right, uh, the, the, the path. So what you're going to have is th this high graph. It, it has about, uh, since you're taking at most uh, k fresh steps, the, the number of words that we have in this high graph is, is about k, right? Uh, and, and then if you have a very long walk of, of length that, that have true to the k, right? Uh, this is a true to the k height, and you can break into pieces, right? Uh, so it, it's as if the, the number of choices that we have for specifying the height is going to be k to the order of, two to, of k to shoot to the k divided by the girth, roughly. Right? So th th this will uniquely specify uh, the walk, and th th that's very good. Because you, you, you're trying to get a k that's uh, extremely large. It's about uh, n, n to, 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 uh, to, 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 to the delta here. All right. Um, yeah, so the, the shoot to the k on top, when you take the two to the k root, it's going to disappear, this k. And you're only left with a k here that goes to the exponent. But log of k is going to be comparable to the graph for these very large logs. But uh, let's try to encode the, the high graph, right? Uh, as we traverse the, the high graph, we can think that uh, we can bring a very simple algorithm to do the counting here. What is one of the simplest algorithms, graph algorithms that you, you have seen before? Yeah, very good. <laughs> we, can do, we can do a DFS, right? Uh, to encode this graph, you can borrow some ideas from, from the DFS and, and try to somehow encode the, 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 this history of the DFS. So it, it, it's as if in the DFS, you can shrink it a bit so, 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 so that it only explores uh, unexplored edges in a certain sense. So it, 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 it's as if each step of uh, uh, DFS, you, you are at a vertex, I don't know, and then you're going to visit another vertex here. And when you're going from this vertex to this vertex, you have a recursive step. And this, this recursive step might be seen at a new edge, right? Uh, and, uh, and, and then you do some exploration, your graph, right? Uh, and then at some point, you're going to traverse this edge again in a backtrack step. So in the B, which is uh, more confusing. Than, and, and then you're going to have a backtrack step, backtracking. So you, you, at some point, you're going to back backtrack. So it, 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 and, um, how many recursive steps that we have that are going to lead to a new edge? We have a, 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 we are going to have a, at, at most here, uh, k, k recursive steps, right? Uh, and you're going to have a corresponding number of, of backtrack steps, right? Uh, and the idea is that um, how can we encode this graph? We can specify a starting vertex of, of the high graph. So in our encoding, we have a V that's the starting vertex of, of the DFS. And, and, and then you are going to have a, a stream that, that's going to, to, to tell us if you have a recursive step or if you have a back a track step. And then this stream is going to have the, about, at the most two the k steps like this. And in each of the, the, the recursive steps, we need to, to explain what is the neighbor that, that we're going to visit. And in, in each of the k fresh steps, recursive steps, each Yeah. Our steps. Uh, we, we have, except from the first one, we have about d minus one choice, right? Uh, right. So, uh, how many encodings? This is going to overshoot, unfortunately. It does not give exactly the, the Ramanujan, but if you count this rough specification of encodings, what are we going to have? We have n choices for the starting vertex. We have the number of binary strings, right, in 2 to the k. We have 2 to the 2 to the k. And, and, and then for each of the, 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 the recursive steps, we need to tell one of the neighbors, d minus 1 to the k at, at most. Right? We have something that's more like this to encode the DFS graph. And we, we also have this part, but the, 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 the 2 is going to multiply, right, to give the correct counting. And we are a little bit off from, from that golden standard there. 
this part we, we can make it shrink, right? Because uh, as you said, after taking the truth decay route, we are going to fight this k in the exponent here with, with the, the girth, which is about log. So you are in good shape. We can handle k all the way to the delta. Right, uh, but, but but this part is going to survive even after taking a true to the k chief root here. You're going to be off by a factor of two, right? Uh, yeah. So that that's one encoding, and this leads to the the, the, the second trade-off that we have. Okay. The first about this encoding, first encode the, the high graph using the ideas of KFS, and then you move back in that way using the, the local tree like. The other one, you are going to bring even stronger properties of, of, of the graph, right? Uh, if you want to really get from a region, what, what you're going to use is that if you have a, a graph that has large girth, I don't know, so suppose that G is our graph, and it, it has quite a large girth, even if you take a, a, a set that's very large, so this is an any vertex graph, and then you, you, you take something that has about n to the delta size set here. It's going to have more edges than the, the than a tree, unfortunately. But the number of extra edges that we have is not going to be that many. So, or one alternative way of saying is that the number of guys of degree three or larger that you see in this local piece of an, an expander is going to be small, because the, the problem is that you cannot compress. It's as if you have this binary stream that's not compressible, right? Uh, but in the DFS, if you have words of degree two, they are very good for us in the DFS. Because for variants of degree two, once we start a, a backtrack sequence of steps and you are, you are backtracking to a vertex of degree two, you know that we are done exploring. So you can continue popping things from the stack and just backtrack all the way. And the, the typical graph that you're going to have is, is a graph that, that has a lot of words of degree two. So we, we cannot store uh, the information for, uh, for, 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 for them. You do not need a lot of information. You just need a fresh neighbor that is going to lead. Right, uh, and the, the, the fraction of, of, of guys of degree, of words of degree, greater uh, equal than three is very small. It, it's going to be a delta fraction on, on, on the size of this graph here. So we have a new prime. That's right, not very good. But the delta is good, this bad, right? It's going to be an alpha, an alpha fraction. So, so some tiny fraction here. That, that depends on the graph and on a bunch of things. But once you have that, it's as if you can compress th this string here. And instead of having this, I'm, I'm I don't expect that's going to be very understandable, but you can pass from something of this form here to, 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 to something that you only indicate the guys that have degree three or less. And if you indicate them, you're in a good shape. But instead of having a binomial bed like this, you get a binomial oops, by alpha for the words of degree two. And this is about two to the entropy of alpha to the K. And as alpha becomes very small, this becomes arbitrary close to, to and the base becomes arbitrary close to one. And after taking the root, you are good. You, you get the neural illusion. Well, but yeah, it's uh, it, 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 not, not explaining a lot, but it, it's a way of compressing this wasteful part. So you're compressing this uncompressible binary stream, but, but by taking advantage of the structure of the DFS, that behaves very nicely when you have a lot of words of degree two, you need to encode less information for, for the compression. Uh, Questions about this is a sketch. It's not, you need to sit down and compute all the parameters and formalize this uh, <laughs> very precisely. But, uh, questions uh, so far? Uh, how does it compare to the classical bound of uh, Fugadi and Comloge, which also uses maybe a similar encoding? Which uh, I, I, I'm not aware of, of this. Uh, this uh, uh, how they encode? Uh, who? In commerce, so there's a bound on the spectrum of um, a random graph, like the NFT. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah. so it doesn't use the non backtracking matrix, but uh, the, the DFS may be similar. Yeah, the, 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 thanks for telling me about this. I am not aware of this result. One thing that changed for, for us, Fumes, uh, is, is that. Typically here, uh, in several analyses of, of the trace power method, it suffices to consider a, a walk that has size log on the number of vertices. But, but since here you're, you're interested in doing these very large lifts, we need to handle union bound over exponentially many possibilities. So the, 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 the length of the walks that we need to consider is extremely large. So it's, it, instead of considering just something that goes about log, number of vertices, you're considering n to the delta, right? Uh, so you're seeing a much, much, much larger proportion of the graph. And then you can code this differently. Uh, 
but I, I don't know this other result, so I don't know exactly how it would compare. But I, I don't know if they, they needed to go that, that far. We are only going that far because we need a very good concentration to make a union bound go through in this kind of an area. So uh, I would, I don't know. Uh, if they are not uh, interested in doing this strong union bound, uh, they're not sure if they would have, a, they would have gone that, that far uh, in terms of count. But I don't. More questions. Is, is it roughly clear what uh, it's, uh... All right, thanks a lot. Thank